Now for something completely different. There's a saying that aging is just another word for living. With that in mind, Discovery Vitality recently discussed the power of health span and how people can add more healthy years to their lives. Now, health span is the average number of years an individual can expect to live in good health at any given age. At current estimates, around 1.4 billion people will be 60 years and older by the year 2030. This number will increase to 2.1 billion by 2050. Let's discuss this further now with Principal Clinical Specialist at Discovery Vitality, Dr. Deepak Patel, who joins us virtually from here in Johannesburg. Dr. Patel, thank you so much for your time this evening. Talk to us, uh, to us about health span. What is this concept? Um, it is, as you say, um, health span is about the average number of years one lives in good health. Uh, but I think it's best understood if we talk about lifespan, which I think is a very accessible uh, kind of concept. Uh, so lifespan is um, a span of life from infancy to old age, uh, hopefully for most people. Mm. And, um, and one, you know, what's happening yeah, globally is that that lifespan, life expectancy has been increasing. And the number of uh, people living into old age, over the age of 60, over the age of 65, in absolute numbers has been increasing and also in relative numbers. Um, so increasingly, uh, one is concerned about what sort of um, life is that that's increasing. <clears throat> We know that a lot of diseases, particularly chronic diseases, tend to occur in the older ages, and that can impair kind of uh, old people's functioning, uh, their, their productivity, their contribution to society. And the whole idea of health span is then to improve that quality of, of life and compress the period uh, in which people are ill before, in a sense, they succumb. Now, um, um, I, I'm so sorry to come in there. Uh, I was going through the presentation on health span. I was quite caught by the statement that you used from WHO that says health as a, quote, a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease, which is what you've alluded to, to here. And one of the statistics that you throw out is that 15 percent of the average lifespan is spent in ill health. Now, that's what the numbers are saying, but you're trying to point to the fact that, yes, that's what the numbers say, but it's what kind of lengthened life uh, you are able to have. And what have you found in your research are the factors that determine how good that longer lifespan is? So, um, as I mentioned, I think as, you, as one gets older, uh, the risk of chronic diseases increases. Um, a lot of it is related to age. Age is not a modifiable factor, but there are many other lifestyle factors that in a sense can be modified to improve the quality of life as one gets older. Um, and these lifestyle factors can be captured in the concept of 4460. What I mean by that is four lifestyle factors uh, which are responsible for four groups of diseases. Uh, yes, so that slide shows that four groups of diseases which is responsible for more than 60% of death. And in fact, that kind of statistic can be changed somewhat. Actually, mm -hmm. it's not just uh, those four groups of diseases, but uh, our own research and research done by other people seems to suggest that many, many other conditions are affected by lifestyle. So what are the four lifestyle factors? One is physical in inactivity. Uh, and together with that, sedentary behavior, which has increased tremendously in the last 50 years. Mm. Uh, we, in other words, sedentary behavior, but people have also become less active, uh, unhealthy eating and excessive intake of calories. Uh, three is uh, intake of tobacco, which uh, despite the best efforts of government still continues to be a, a big problem. Uh, and then for excessive alcohol intake. And those four lifestyle factors are responsible for four groups of diseases. One is cardiovascular disease, which uh, 
people will understand as, as high blood pressure, heart disease, strokes, uh, diabetes is the second group of diseases. Uh, thirdly is uh, lung disease and fourthly cancer. Uh, people might think that cancer is not affected by lifestyle, but lifestyle has a mm. big influence on the incidence of cancer, uh, particularly cancers like breast cancer, colon cancer. <clears throat> so if, if one um, addresses those lifestyle factors, then you're likely to have a big impact on those four conditions for groups of diseases. And I would add a fifth group, and that's infectious diseases. Um, we showed last year that people who were physically active had much uh, less severe COVID than people who were not. And that research you know, is being replicated elsewhere. So even infectious diseases are affected considerably by lifestyle. And that's responsible for more than 60% of deaths globally. Now, Dr. Dr. Patel, um, you also spent quite a bit of time highlighting the importance of good sleep, not just any kind of sleep, good sleep, um, and emphasis on your focus on your mental well-being, well something that we're hearing about day in and day out in South Africa as, as we face what many experts are saying are, is a crisis in mental health and the need here to improve your cognitive fitness. Are you also here then pointing to the fact that um, we have communities in South Africa who more and more are having to deal with their elderly facing um, a journey with either Alzheimer's and or dementia? Um, that's absolutely true. Um, as, as the number of people who are elderly increases, uh, the number of people with dementia and Alzheimer's is the most common form of dementia um, is also increasing. Um, and, you know, as we age, like many other things, uh, one tends to have a bit of cognitive decline. That's completely normal. And there are things one can do to, to diminish that cognitive decline. So the most important thing uh, for an an older person is to be working. Uh, doesn't necessarily have to be, um, you know, paid work, but working, charitable work, social work, uh, doing something in a sense that keeps you uh, engaged as you get older. Uh, uh, and together with that, uh, the social connections. One has to have a group of friends, family that one can interact with, talk with. Um, the other things that keep your mind very active um, are things like um, playing bridge. Uh, again, that's a social kind of thing, uh, and that helps. Uh, Sudoku, watching documentaries, uh, taking up new hobbies. Um, so all those things help with cognitive aging and to, to, to some extent and to a considerable extent with dementia as well. Um, you mentioned sleep. Sleep, you know, we are discovering um, so much about uh, the importance of sleep, uh, both the the quantity of sleep, and some people can get away with very little sleep, but mm. most people need at least six to nine hours of sleep, preferably about seven hours of sleep. And there's so much that intrudes on that quantity of sleep, uh, you know, social media, TV in the room, mm. um, and you know just interacting with your phone watch uh, looking at emails so your mind's kept active and it's very difficult then uh, to have even a good quality of sleep uh, the other things that affect good quality of sleep uh, is obviously stimulants coffee smoking um, excessive uh, intake of alcohol um, the one thing that actually helps both with sleep and cognitive decline and also mental health is physical activity, um, being physically active, exercising, doing at least 30 minutes uh, of moderate intensity exercise, like a brisk walk uh, every day for five days or longer, um, you know, at a minimum, that's going to improve your physical health considerably and your mental health. So I think that's a, if you can, you know, set aside an hour to watch TV, you can set aside 30 minutes to, yeah. to exercise every day.
It's funny you should mention the importance of sleep and exercise. I was at a kiddies party this afternoon. If you listen to what parents are saying about the amount of sleep they're getting, they're not getting the sleep because of their toddlers, but they are very active. So maybe it all balances out in the end. Just before I let you go, uh, Dr. <laughs> Patel, um, uh, I suppose it all makes sense as to why Discovery would look into this because they are also having to prepare to, through their medical scheme and through Vitality, having to look after people for a much longer period of time. Uh, talk to us about the, what the thinking was behind this. So this is an old concept with us. Although we, we're talking about health spend now, you know, there are two aspects to Discovery and, and Vitality as a, as a combined uh, kind of offering. On the one hand, we fund through Discovery Health, uh, health care. In other words, when people get uh, ill, they need hospitalization or they have a, a chronic condition, uh, through the medical scheme, we fund that. But we've for a long time now had a program called Vitality, which is looking at health promotion getting people physically active, eating healthily, uh, mental well-being, uh, giving up smoking. So uh, it's it's a model called a shared value model. It's a pretty unique kind of insurance model. Um, I know in South Africa, it's a medical scheme, not an insurance, but it is a pretty unique model in that we're addressing both uh, a health promotion and keeping people healthy, but at the same time, when they do get ill, uh, funding their the health care needs. Um, and we call it a shared value model. And in that context, I think we're talking about health span, particularly as something that's important for pe uh, older adults. And I, I would say that the best way to to be healthy in old age is to to enter older age being healthy mm. so there's no you know time uh, in a sense the best time to to get healthy is really from early in life uh, but it's never too late to start uh, okay. even if you haven't been 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 doing healthy things at a younger age <clears throat> Great advice um, at this time of the night. Uh, put down that last <laughs> cup of coffee as we listen to Dr. Deepak Patel, who is the principal a clinical specialist at Discovery Vitality. Thank you so much for your time this evening.